I see people who are weary. I see people who are tired. I see people who have been carrying heavy loads and heavy burdens. People who have been trying to figure things out for themselves for years and years and years. And it, it kind of seems like life is a roller coaster. Every time we get on the way up, we end up going on the way back down. And we get weary and we get tired and we carry our burdens. And the more we carry, the harder we work. And the harder we work, the less progress we make. And the less progress we make, the more frustrated we become. And the more weary we get. And it's a vicious cycle in the lives of some of us. I came here to share a word with you to break that cycle. To bring you a rest, not just an eternal rest in heaven. I'm talking about one now. I'm talking a place of rest now. Amen. A place to lay down your burdens and a place to end your weariness and a place to get off the roller coaster and to begin to move forward with the plan that God has given you. The more people I meet, the more I discover there are two reasons why people are weary. One is that people who are saved are weary because they've never heard the real gospel. They've heard what a lot of the things that we teach in church, and believe me, I'm, I'm not against church. I'm against some of the things that we've taught as the institution of church that have held people in bondage to what Jesus really said and what Jesus really meant. And the other reason we're weary is because we haven't heard the gospel at all. And so we're working to make things happen in our lives in our own strength. And whether you're sitting here this afternoon and you're saved and weary, or whether you are unsaved and weary, the message from the Lord is exactly the same message. And that is, before God created anything you see around you, before your parents, before your grandparents, before your ancestors came into being, God decided that you would be here and you would be at this place in time and you would be faced with a decision that I'm going to put before you. And it is a decision to give up control for your life, to give up control of making all of your decisions, to give up control for trying to make everything work out the way you want it to work out and allow God to begin to take control of your life, not just to go to church, but as Kim and the praise team said, to have a personal relationship with them. You see, all the problems that you're trying to solve, God has already solved those problems. All the financial resources that you are so desirous of getting a hold of, God's already set those aside for you. Those of you who need a place to stay, God already has established a home for you. Those who are looking for relationships to come into being and to, to be knit back together, God's already healed those things. And in fact, the reality of the gospel is that when Jesus died on the cross, how many people did he save? How many people did he save? Everybody. Which means those of you sitting here who have never heard the gospel before, you need to hear the real gospel which says you're already saved, you just don't recognize it. Hallelujah. The answer to all of your problems and concerns is right there before you, but because you've never opened up your heart to receive God's answers, you don't know about it. In church, we teach people a gospel that is kind of like having to wash up before you can take a bath. We teach people a gospel that says, I got to get myself right, I got to get myself together, I got to have a lot fewer issues and problems in my life. I got to be able to manage some of my habits and some of my tendencies and some of my addictions before I can become acceptable to God. And that's not the real gospel. Hallelujah! That's, that's not what Jesus said. Jesus accepted you the way you are because he created you the way you are. You are no more responsible for who you are than anyone else. God made you who you are and he is, accepts you who you are, and he simply wants you to come into the recognition that he made you the way he wanted you to be. I'm not saying that all of our circumstances are where they need to be. I'm not saying all of us are in the place that God wants us to be. I'm simply saying that God has loved and accepted you exactly where you are. In the middle of your difficulties, in the middle of your shortcomings, in the middle of your weaknesses, in the middle of your many, many, many failures, and I can witness to that because I've had many, many failures of all kinds, 
He's accepted me and loved me in the midst of every one of those circumstances. That's the real gospel. The real gospel says that you are saved by grace through faith. Not of yourself, not of works, lest anybody could take credit for it. God's grace means that He chose you to be saved before you even knew that He existed.